Hi, Charlie here. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Chris Hadfield. We all know these heroes of space exploration. But, like anything, space exploration has its own forgotten, unsung heroes. And the best example of this is one Vladimir Komarov from the Soviet Union. The year was 1967 in the Soviet Union. It was approaching the 50th anniversary of the Union, and the government demanded something big from their space program. The Soviet space program was trying to battle NASA when it came to the Cold War, but because of the country's 50th anniversary, the government wanted them to do something special. The then leader Brezhnev decided he wanted to have two Soviet spacecrafts rendezvous in space. He wanted these two Soviet space vehicles to launch into outer space. They would then dock together and allow the cosmonauts to move between ships. This mission would be known as Soyuz. The first ship would be known as Soyuz 1 and the second Soyuz 2. It was decided that Vladimir Komarov, a cosmonaut, would be in the first Soyuz ship and Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space, would be in the second ship. When they were both in space, the two vehicles would meet. The two vehicles would then dock together. Komarov would climb into Gagarin's vehicle, and Gagarin would go into Komarov's, exchanging places. They would then return home in each other's ships. Brezhnev, who was a brutal leader, said he wanted this to happen, no exceptions. But there was a problem. Scratch that, a lot of problems. Everyone in the Soviet space program knew that these space capsules were not ready to fly, but everyone was terrified of Brezhnev. His reaction to the mission being cancelled or even delayed would be brutal, and Komarov told friends that he would likely never come back from space, at least not as an alive man. However, Komarov did not want to back out of the mission. You see, if he did that, then Gagarin would take his place. Komarov and Gagarin were best friends, and he could not do that to his best friend. The men's families would often get together, and they'd even go hunting together too. Gagarin said the mission should not go ahead, and even wrote a 10-page memo and gave it to the KGB. Sadly though, no one in the KGB would send it up the chain of command. They were all far too scared of Brezhnev. Fast forward a few months, and it was less than 30 days before launch. Komarov realized that cancelling the mission or even delaying it was simply not an option. Friends of Komarov's in the KGB privately said that he should refuse to do the mission, but Komarov said that if I don't make this flight, they'll send the backup pilot instead. That was Yuri Gagarin, or Yura as Komarov called him. He said that Gagarin will perish instead of me and we've got to take care of him. As Komarov said this, he burst into tears. Every day that passed, everyone on the space program was very pessimistic and worried. There was a serious problem with the space machinery. 203 structural problems to be exact. That's how many their technicians had identified on the pre-test flights of Soyuz 1. Eventually, it was the day of reckoning. On April 24th, 1967, Vladimir Komarov arrived to work, but he knew full well that he would likely never make it back to his planet, let alone his house. As he climbed into the spacecraft, he was very pessimistic. But he was also kind of resigned, and he'd accepted his fate. His fellow cosmonauts tried to cheer him up by singing, and eventually he joined in. Yuri Gagarin actually turned up to the launch in full gear. He tried to convince the crew to let him pilot the craft instead, but all of the crew, including Komarov, refused. Eight minutes later, the spacecraft took off, and Komarov was in outer space. He was inside the most sophisticated spacecraft ever launched. But almost immediately as he got into orbit, there were problems. Two of the spacecraft's solar panels failed to deploy. This meant it had no electrical power, and this obscured some navigation equipment. There were also various other glitches in the technology as the day went on. Komarov tried to change the spacecraft's orbit, but this did not work. The ship began to wildly rotate around its axis. Komarov tried to correct the issue, but this only worsened the problem. This led to the thermal control system breaking. Communications with the ground also ceased. And when the electricity finally cut off, the orientation system failed. Now, Soyuz 2 was set to launch and bring Gagarin up with Komarov. But with ground control seeing all of these problems, they decided to abandon Soyuz 2's launch. They shifted their attention onto trying to bring Komarov home as soon as possible. But after five hours, Komarov could not orientate the Soyuz module. The craft was relaying unreliable status information to ground control. And eventually, after five hours, communication was lost. Komarov then had to do something he'd never done before in training. He tried to align the spacecraft and fire the retro rockets himself. 
This kind of worked, and he did successfully re-enter Earth's atmosphere. But as the cabin fell to Earth, the parachute did not deploy. The backup parachute did deploy, but it got tangled in the drag chute of the main parachute. This caused Soyuz 1 to crash at great speeds. And of course, Vladimir Komarov did not make it. As Komarov headed to his doom, US listening posts in Turkey actually heard him. He was crying out in rage, annoyed at the people who'd built the spaceship. Some translators heard him say heat is rising in the capsule, and he also said that the engineers had doomed him. When the cabin hit the ground, there was a gigantic fireball. Hours later, the Soviet Air Force recovery teams came to the scene, but all they found was burning metal. The Soviet Premier Alexei Kosygin called Komarov's wife. They talked about what to say to their children, and Alexei also called him a hero. He also cried when talking to Komarov's wife. The aftermath was very bad for the Soviet space program and government. Everyone realized that the mission had been rushed, and in the newspaper Pravda, Garrigan criticized the government who let his friend fly. Garrigan actually said that he must go and see Brezhnev personally because he was so angry. But sadly, one year later, Garrigan himself passed away when he crashed a fighter jet. Vladimir Komarov was honored with a state funeral in Moscow, but many were baffled as to why he chose an open casket. The only thing left of him was a heel bone, but Komarov personally decided he wanted to do this to send a message to the government. He blamed them, and this was kind of like his final revenge. He was forcing his superiors to look at what they'd done. It's important we remember astronauts like Vladimir Komarov. Everyone knows the American heroes, and also some Russian cosmonauts like Garrigan, but we can never forget those who made the ultimate sacrifice to get humanity into outer space. But now it's time to make your voice heard. Seeing as space travel is now a lot safer, would you like to travel to space in the future? If you want some more amazing videos, then check out my second channel. But as always, thanks for watching. There are some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.